My name is Dr. Padijua Yodeji. I am I work with the Action Consult. We consult for USAID, PIN, PIN is a Chevron Foundation. We also consult for SMEDAN. SMEDAN is Small and Medium Enterprise Development Agency of Nigeria. And then uh, we've been doing a lot of jobs in, um, in the aquaculture terrain. And of all the things we do, I'm, I'm a proud fish farmer. I've been a fish farmer for the past 14 years. God has helped us so far. We have a 20,000 capacity right now as we speak. And um, more than 70% of my farm is now tarpaulin ponds. We started with earthen ponds, but today we are having tarpaulin ponds. I'm here to talk about profitable catfish business. Yes, I'm looking for the best angle to come in. And I'm warming up. For those of us, I'm seeing some faces that have been in my class before. <laughs> I'm happy that you can make it here. And I'm glad, I'm so happy to be here again in Sapele. It's a homecoming again for me. Thank you very much. So, let's go to the introduction. Now, we at the Action Consult, we are determined to improve food security by building the right skill, knowledge, attitude to help actors in the value chain maximize their profit. Learning of the value chain approach and facilitate linkages amongst its actors. I will pause here and say something. If I ask you today, what is a business? What comes to your mind when you talk, think about business? Let me just hear one voice. When you talk about business, let me just hear one response. What comes to your mind? Profit. Profit. So, more than 90% of us seated in this place are businessmen. We know the reason why I'm this morning around 2 a.m. I landed here just to see the beautiful faces of people in Sapele and to give you a message that you can do business with catfish. Many of us, we do catfish production, but we don't do business with catfish production. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you say business is all about profit, if catfish is not bringing in profit, are you doing business with catfish? Good. So I'm talking about catfish farming and its potentials, innovative mar um, catfish marketing, and a brief talk on tilapia. But before I go further, I want us to look at these three basic things. These three basic things. Let me bring them closer to you. Number one, attitude. If you have the wrong attitude, pertaining any business, pertaining any business, you cannot thrive. I don't care what business it is. If the moment you see shit and you say, mm, it's smelling, you can't make money from that shit. Am I making sense? If you don't have the right attitude, you are not about to make money. Business has been wired. You must see the positivity. You must see the positive angle. You must see the cup as half full, not half empty. If you don't have the right attitude, you cannot even call on knowledge. Knowledge is the next thing. You can have the best ego, you can have the best attitude. But if you don't know about this venture, if you don't have the basic knowledge in this venture, there is no how you succeed. Hello? But you are more likely to have knowledge if your attitude is right. Because you will settle down, you want to read, you want to study, you want to know more. Am I making sense? Now, once you have the knowledge, the knowledge does not naturally change to skill. Skill comes from the template of consistency. You must practice what you know again and again, and before you know it, you are skillful. One of my best friends is doing very well in what he does. He didn't just wake up one morning and start scoring goals. Sorry, I didn't mention his name, you know, mercy. He didn't just wake up one morning and started scoring goals. He had started practicing. He had the right attitude. The right attitude would wake him up in the morning to go to football. And he kept on practicing. He had the knowledge. And before you know it, anytime you're watching Barcelona match and you see mercy on the pitch, you that is even watching it, you're already expecting a goal. Am I making sense? Now let me give you another example of another good friend of mine, Muhammad Ali. When Muhammad Ali was going to fight Freysen, right? 
he won. And in his interview, do you know what he said? He said, I had won this match five weeks ago. Hello, why did you bring the cane? He said, yes, I want to teach those naughty children to behave. I said, okay. Her friend, who is living with us, going to the same school, came back and said, he wants to be a farmer. I was happy in my mind that maybe he has seen me as a farmer and he wants to now become a farmer. Do you know what the guy wore when he came out from the room? He wore a singlet, a short nigger, and put a hole on his neck and said that he ought to be a farmer. I said, this is not, I said, get back and change your dress. <laughs> Farmers don't look like this again. The mentality they've given us before now is that the worst. Am, am I coming? Am I telling the truth? They make farmer look so, so derogative that he yourself will be afraid to come out and tell people, I'm a farmer. Well, I'm a proud farmer. I feed people. I make it sure that you, you have protein on your table. I make sure that you're healthy. I make sure that you don't have complaints. And if you have complaints, if you're not eating protein today, please see me immediately after this class. I will um, exchange protein with your finance. Thank you very much. So there are two arms to fish farming. Two arms to fish farming. <coughs> what is your business? Do you understand the business circle of fish farming? Do you keep or do you know how to keep the right records? Can you carry out proper maintenance on your farm? Can you calculate cost-benefit ratio? Are you producing what the market is demanding? Now, the question he asks, and I will still ask, is why catfish? There are several other businesses in this world. Why catfish? One, they have economic value. Today, the value of catfish is growing on the high. Every day, people are buying more and more catfish. If you produce 10, I produce, the last harvest we harvested was about 17 tons for my farm. And as soon as we we're finishing selling, a lot more people were asking for more. Am I making sense? The same people that bought three weeks ago came back to say they want some more. Am I making sense? But it doesn't just happen by magic. I'll talk to you how we, get, how we got there. They are hardy, they are able to withstand hard conditions in the environment. They can easily be cultivated but in captivity. It has high nutritional value. It is palatable. You can see the picture of the catfish there that we put in sauce. It's catfish that we made though. It's not the one that we photoshopped though. Am I making sense? Its demand is on the increase and it shows great potential for growth. It is a means of job creation. But like I said before, the definition of business is delivering goods and services with the aim of making profit. Many of us who deliver services have been delivering services for a long time without making money. All of a sudden, I understood how to make money from that service. And in the last week, up till today, I know how much I have made from the service of just trying to tell you how fish. They say it deals in goods and what? Services. It requires investment. You must be ready to play your part. Put your seed down. If you don't invest your money, your money won't come back. Am I making sense? It's aimed at making profit. It involves risk and hard work. Anybody who stands here and tells you catfish business is the sweetest business because maybe you put fish in water, you will make money. It's a lie. It requires diligence, hard work, meticulousness. Am I making sense? And the, pri uh, 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 the priceless knowledge for you to sustain yourself in such a business. The last one, it says it requires sound knowledge in that venture. If you invest in something you don't know anything about, then very soon you'll get out of that business. I'm conscious of my time. Basic in catfish production, I won't waste too much time here because he has, um, he has said a lot about it. But there are three major things that you must get right in catfish production. The feed. If your feed is faulty, you can't get the equation correct. The seed, that is the juvenile, the fingerlings. If it is faulty, you can't get the right equation. Then also, the water they live in, their environment. If you don't have good potential,
potable water, quality water for the fish to grow in, you cannot have a successful farm. So when I come to people's farms to see what is going on in your farm, I'm looking generally in the middle of these three things. There are much more things, but it all has to involve these three things. He has talked about um, the environment, site selection. I'll just breeze through what I have in the slide. Two, water availability and quality. Now when we say accessibility to market, I just want to correct one notion. It does not mean that this is the market, let me put my pond in the center of that market. Hello. You must know where the market is and how to get there. I sell fish in Canada. My fish farm is not in Canada. People buy fish here in Sapele from Ibadan. And they do not bring their film here to sell to you. Because they want to be, it's not nearness to market, it's access to market. If you don't know that this person needs it, if you don't know Bello in Abuja that needs these sizes, you don't have access to him at all. Am I making sense? So, when you're setting your fish farm, you can have it in your house. Your house could be far away from, from the market. But if you know who can find you and you can produce to that person's specification, the person will definitely buy from you. Are we together? The soil quality and topography for pond production build some form of security. Biosecurity, security against microorganisms, security against poachers, predators, and things like that. I don't have all the time, so I can't give you a detailed lecture. But I do have detailed lectures from time to time, and I believe we'll communicate to you going forward. I put here a schematic diagram of how to dig a real, a, a good pond. You can see the slope, you can see the water outlet, you can see the dikes having green patches on it to hold the soil from erosion. Then you can see fish doing well in it. Then you can see an inlet pipe. Then, um, then uh, the harvesting sun. So that by the time you're emptying your water, all the water will not empty the concrete tank. I also put a schematic diagram there. The concrete tank, well, if you get this book, it's well explained there. Let me not waste time. It's well explained there. How you can use your dimensions, the thickness, the level of depth you should get, go into to the ground to get your, 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 your um, foundation solid, right? Then we also have this picture here is a fiber tank. It's a little bit more expensive than the tapering tank. But the tapering tank is doing great. And you're still going to have best results from it. Now, um, there's some key points here to note while constructing a pond. A good functional valve should be made available at the entry of all ponds in and out uh, to open and close water supply when necessary. It's very, very important. Then a screen should be attached to the excess pipe so that you don't lose your fish or allow stray fish to come in. For ethane ponds, the pond should be well lined and fertilized before stocking. How you can explain to you later, you can get out. My number will be out there immediately after this um, lecture. Then the use of surface nets to, pre to prevent um, predators such as snakes, birds, and so on is necessary. Then the distance between two ethane ponds should be between two to three meters to allow for free movement. If like my dad's pond, when he started, he saw mine, he loved it, he also started. The dikes were so, he wanted to conserve the space. Now, he stopped going to the farm because he was not comfortable walking in between the ponds. And if you can't get to your farm, then you're not running the farm. People started stealing his fish, his fish was not doing well. At the point in time, I had to buy it over. Am I making sense? So it's important that you allow the space to be there to avoid erosion, as in, quick erosion or quick depletion of the ethane pond. The space should be between two to three meters. When we go to water quality, I just dropped out some parameters you need to maintain to be sure you have good water on your farm. The oxygen level should be four parts per million and above. The pH should be between 6.5 to 8.5. The carbon dioxide should be zero to 15 parts per million. Um, total alkalinity or hardness should be between 60 to 100 parts per million. Nitrate should be between 0 to 2.5 parts per million. Iron should be 0 to 0 0.5. And the temperature for catfish especially is 28 to 32 degrees centigrade. Now, 
some people don't know that these factors are important. If you have a good, if you have a marked distortion, it can affect the production of your fish. Fingerling selection. For the fingerling selection, I like his idea. Hold, have a good relationship with someone who is hatching fish. When I say good relationship, let the person have your back. Because you, you can never, there are ways you can actually tell that this fish is not, but you may not, be, you may not know immediately. You can only bank on the fact that he is selling to you out of integrity. And for those breeders who sell fish that is not good, you lose the customer immediately. You know, there are a lot of people who came to me and complained that this person I bought this fish did not do well. I will never go back there to buy. Is that good business? That is not how to do good uh, business. So it's important to have the right set of fingerlings on your farm for a good farm. Um, and circle. Now there's one thing I want to also mention, I think he didn't mention so I will stay there a bit. The stocking density in your farm. You have a bowl, your farm should, is not, should not take more than 500 fish. But because you had some extra cash and you feel how much is the fingerling, it's just that starting there and 500, how much, that's 1,500. It is a, uh, uh, 15,000, no, it's 15,000 I think. 15,000, sorry, don't mind my maths. And you feel, ah, 15,000 is so cheap. I can buy 30,000 out of water, and let me put 1,000 inside the water. And you put them inside the water and you are seeing them swimming, you are happy. The truth about it is this, you have pegged the progress of that farm because you've overstocked the fish. But the, the, no matter how good the parents are, they'll be competing for space, for air, for food and they will not do well. I tell my people it's better to understock and over harvest than overstock and under harvest. Am I making sense? There's a possibility for you to stock 250 in the 500 capacity and still harvest 500 kg. Am I making sense? And if you stock 1,000 in the 500 capacity, you, you come up with maybe 300 kg even less sometimes who's losing you know you'll be feeding them with the mindset that i have a thousand in this farm i have a thousand in this farm your biomass calculation a thousand in this farm a thousand in this farm and you know what it means to throw 42 percent crude protein inside water chai <laughs> it's not easy let's go, let's go forward okay yes so the Recommended stocking density is between 50 to 70 per meter cube. That means for 50 is ideal. But if you have good water supply and good run through or a recirculatory system, you can still increase it to 75 per meter cube. If you have one meter, one meter, one meter up, you only put 50 fish. So you can calculate your pond space and know exactly what to put in. Sorting and grading. After four weeks, it's important that you stop. Then three months after stocking, you also, you also grade. Then before sales, you also want to sort. I normally tell my people, don't allow the market for 30 days. You have wasted 15 moodles. 15 moodles times 300. That is 4,500. Many of us don't calculate it like that. We get, when I get to my farm and my boy sees me picking up feed that will escape from his hand to the ground, he will think, this is like I don't crazy or something, don't do this guy. <laughs> and for you to put such an investment in a particular feed, you need to be sure of that feed and what that feed can do. Hello? Because if you lose your investment in that feed, there is no how you're going to gain it back. And that is why I work strictly with some feed companies. I'm not, I'm not at liberty to mention any feed company, even if, you understand? Because they are present, some of them are here, and I may not be working with any of them, and I don't want them to black, <laughs> to pencil me out of their market. <laughs> I'm not making sense. But I know what this feed will do at this certain stage. I know the feed to fall back on for the time of emergency. I know the feed to fall on when I want lean fish. I say fish will go get fat, where I go feed dry and sell. 
Am I making sense? Do you know why I take pains to know this? Because that is where my money is. It's not in the 30,000 naira juvenile. Am I making sense? I want to play with it. It's business I'm doing, not to satisfy somebody. Am I making sense? Feed management. There are different types of feed. There's a sinking feed, there's a floating feed. They have their advantages and disadvantages. The only thing is this, when you get your feed from a source that does not have the right capacity to produce good feed, you may have problems on your farm. And that is why I don't really go near sinking feed going forward. When I started, I used to use sinking feed. And I'm not saying it is bad. But I noticed that in one pellet of sinking feed, there may be methionine lysine, you know? And this other pellet, it did not get enter this one. If my fish pick this pellet, I don't pick any other pellet, and what will happen? It will be going to will be variation in the growth of your fish. Am I making sense? So you don't get to your farm, you see some fish just grow well because they're eating all the best of the best, and this other one is just growing anyhow. You count the number, they are all normal, it's the same. So it's not as if fish eat fish, although yes, fish can also eat fish. Oh. But the feed disparity in its constituents can allow the variation to occur. It happens. Floating feed. I quickly removed some pictures because I, I normally put the pictures of the feed that I use there. So I was careful enough to remove it so I don't get noise from my bosses with the here. <laughs> we have the spot feeding, we have the demand feeding, we have the broadcasting feeding. They all have the advantages and disadvantages. Some of us will say, I don't get time to the measure width, height, size, length, diameter, to start calculating biomass to feed. Let me just feed till they want no more. Is it a good practice? I'll tell you no. At his age, what happens? I'm showing sure love now. My guy chop up and grow up. Is he going to chop up and grow up? When he chop up, sleepless night has begun. Am I making sense? Constipation comes in. Before you know it, he vomits. Before you know it, and feeding by biomass is also very, very important. This is what we advocate. In fact, we got to a point that we developed a chart on how to feed your fish. Wow. You can see it from there. It's a pity. But uh, maybe if I give you the slides, you'll be able to see it up close and past now. That is if some of us, we know they put our information down. Things say they won't come rob you of your money. Yes, Nigeria is a very healthy country to live in. But in a scenario like this, it's good to also let us have your information so that we can get back to you and have what we call repeat business. It's good for business. Now, let me go quickly to the market aspect of fish farming. Value chain and market analysis. Farming fish, producing fish on the farm, is not the only activity in the space of aquaculture. Hello? There are other activities that must work hand in hand, or else the fish will you get for your farm, no go bring back profit. There must be someone that you are holding on one side, and someone that you are holding on the other side, for you to be able to say yes, I get the right friends to move forward in this fish farming business. Am I making sense? If you are a fish farmer and you don't have a good relationship with your input provider, when I say input provider, I'm talking about the person who is giving you fingerlings, the person who is giving you feed, hmm? you will soon fall out of business. That's the truth. Let me give you a small example. Back in Akure, where I have my fish farm, I have a lot of farmers. I have well over 12,000 farmers that I've trained so far, up to date. But in Akure, we have close to 4,000. So about 312 of them came together and said, ah, Oga, please, any feed with you, you buy. Nine, we go buy. But I saw the wisdom in it. When I pulled the order of the whole 320, now like three trailers, once, so I bypass all the protocol of distributor, assistant distributor, assistant assistant distributor, retailer, to get my feed. You know, if a distributor takes it, he puts his 5%, he adds transfer fare to it. He sends to his sub-dealer, sub-dealer to put his own 
transfer fare and add his own 10% because he will stay small for his own shop. The sub dealer will now tell it to the retailer. The retailer will now put almost 50% because I say, okay, take one more do I mean, he will give you. Because he knows he's selling it piecemeal. And you that is buying it there, you're still going to compete with people who are buying it directly. You're even going to put some of these people selling feed, they produce the fish. And you want to go and compete with them. Is it possible? So we have we brought up a scheme. We call it Farmers Investment and Incubation Network. So all these farmers came together, pooled their resources together, and we order for, for the feed. And it came down. Although I was like the dealer, I had once not up to 5%, it was like 2%, but at least the farmer were smiling. That is far cheaper than what they will get from the open market. What happened? They saw the value that I could help them, I could help represent them, and they held my hand. And me too, because I'm in consonance with my feet, guys, I held their hand, and I was able to get that supply chain. If you are producing fish, and you don't know who is going to eat this fish, you are not yet a farmer. In fact, you are a farmer, 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 a farmer before, before. Am I making sense? That one, the way they will hang home. Wear on singlet and short nigga go far. You need to know your partner in front of you. Who am I producing this fish for? Why do you want to know that? What she likes will be different from what she likes, different from what he likes, different from what he likes. But the moment you know that 30 people like this type of fish, five people like her own kind of fish. You can quickly patch tent with his own kind of fish. Am I making sense? Because you have more people to sell to. And that brought the magic in my own business. Right? I will train them. I suffered long, like my friend is suffering long now, bringing you guys together and feeding you without you paying a dime. By providing them spot on drillers, drillers for them to what? Drill their barbecue. Now today, what is happening? I get people where they sell fish to constantly. Guys, my agreement with you is that you don't buy fish from any other person. You buy my own fish. Wow. Am I making sense? Wow. 20 of them are buying 10 kg every day. That means every day I'm selling 200 kg. In 10 days I sold 2 tons. When you hear me say I sold 15, 20 tons, people will say, how are you doing? I create, I, I go look for friends in the downline. Am I making sense? I hope I've sold one small trade secret for my yeah, own trade yeah, secret. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. When you're processing your fish, you need to know what the people like. This is a training facility where my assistant was training people on how to process dried fish. We clean up the guts, we remove the intestines, Put them without any stick and it goes like that and we dry it up. Why are we doing this? Because we have seen some certain sets of the market that likes this type of fish. So, are we doing a supply chain or a value chain? I will tell you the difference between the supply chain and the value chain. The supply chain, eh, you could just start from your own farm. Say, okay, I want to do fish farm. You started your fish farm. Maybe you finish it. You're now looking for who to right. supply. That's supply chain. It starts from the okay. input stealer. You go buy your feed. Produce your feed. You, they look for processor. Please take my fish. Process. If you find good. Some of us manage to climb that ladder up to the market point. But most of us, we hang in between because you don't know who to supply these things to. But when we say value chain, this is from the market to the input guy. Am I making sense? When I went to this feed factory and I told them, I have 45 guys who will be buying fish from me on a daily basis. And they will be buying 10, 10 kg. That is 450 kg fish every day. But I don't have that capacity yet. The feed guy said, ah, why? What are you waiting for? I said, I'm waiting for you. He said, what about me? I said, 
I can get the juveniles, but if you give me a feed, we'll feed these people and we'll sell it and we'll get the money for us. Wait. This thing I'm saying, I'm laughing at. Is it true to? Instead of me to go bank, I go to the feed manufacturer. And guess what they did? They said, we'll do it together, we'll do it together. They opened up accounts for me and they gave me feed. They were monitoring me and I was doing it. And we sold. Money has come out. When they said, and I, I pushed money back into their account. It doesn't happen overnight. The integrity of that kind of currency eh, is what we call, you know, the, the, you know, I've even said the answer already. Integrity is that kind of eh, currency. If I've not been buying before, if I've not been doing businesses with them before, if I've not been on the field active for the past 14 years, I won't repeat at that point in time. Hello. Hello. Are we together? So you see that many of us, we don't do catfish. We have not looked into the angle of applying our sense to make it a business venture. You must find out what the market wants. They are the king. If they're not eating, you are not producing. And if you produce, not for your family. And the day your family will tell you, say, we don't even join your market. You produce for nothing. Am I making sense? So there are people that want this fish. Now, why do you want to know these people that want this fish? Chipri will buy from me, but the fish he buys from me is between 1.2 to 1.5. Hello? Not only will he buy 1.2 to 1.5 kg, he cannot travel all the way from Abuja to Akure to only pick one ton. He has to pick minimum four tons, five tons, minimum. So even if I grow fish and I have 500 kg and they are all 1.2, will I be calling Chipri? It's not in my market space. I'm going to look for um, somebody around the environment. But now that I know that Chipri has this thing, I put in two tasks. Come, guy. I don't have your fish now, but come in July, I will have your fish. Can you give me a written statement as per demand order? And it gives me demand order because we have to start talking. And with that demand order, I can get to the bank and tell them, come, my market plan is to supply Mr. Chibri four tons in July. All I need is money to buy feed from that, my feed friend. Am I making sense? If you don't have the market, okay, if you don't take anything from this today, take this home. Never produce what you cannot sell. You may have the ability to produce 2,000, but you can only sell 200. Start with that 200. Hello? When you start with that 200, the people, let me give you another scenario. It's another business sense, but I don't know why I'm giving all this out. I hope you guys are not carrying me in my office later. I should point it out. <laughs> now, there's a very beautiful section in our society, and that is the banking sector. We looked at it, a lot of these ladies that go to the bank don't even have time to take care of their children, let alone go to the market. Going to the market for them is burdensome. So I dispatched my marketers. I said, come, don't carry products, don't even carry fish, don't even carry, just carry paper and biro, and ask every female banker that you know, what do you buy and how do you buy it? Don't even let them think or smell fish around you. Why? Because if you come with fish, they could not build no in front of them and then tell you, no, 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 no. You will tell you what you say. When the woman says, ah, actually, it's just that there's no time. Some say they need rice, they need this, they need this. They don't push it. Do you buy protein or fish? Some say we buy fish. So those people that say they buy fish, naturally, this is my market. These people naturally buy fish. Nobody say, I want to start to convince you to come and start buying fish when you're eating snail. Am I making sense? So we're able to get just four or five of them. And then we told them every Friday between the hours of 12 and 2, we will bring your order. If it is fresh, you want it, we will bring it. Don't put small eyes, make it sustainable. Bring it to you, you take it home. The, those, the one that wants fresh, we normally give it to them by 4 or 4.30. But the ones that want smoke, we give it to them in the afternoon. When we started it like that, guess what happened? They started telling their friends, ah, this, now this guy, they bring this thing to me. Now let me tell you something. I get accounts in more than seven different banks. 
and my criteria to open an account in your bank is for you to buy my fish. Wow. So they called me to their meetings to talk to them about my fish. Yes. When you buy my fish, I didn't know the money, you just pay your money to this account. It's a GT account, it's your account. You just put it there. And then, and then, all right, all right, all right. All right. There is potential in it. There is potential in it. There's an hierarchy from the producer to the processor to the market, to the wholesaler, to the, um, to the retailer, and then to the final consumer. It's has high potentials. It's a pity there's no much time. I don't want this small statistics. In 1995, they sold in Nigeria here 16,000 plus metric tons of catfish. 1995. In 2007, they sold 85,000 metric tons of. Then in 2009, it went up to 152,000 metric tons. One that they could calculate to. In 2014, 250 metric ton. It's not because I arrived here 2 a.m. I be one check the one way the road sell for last year, and I'm telling you it's going to be more than three times of this one. So therefore, you don't tell me that there is no business in catfish. There is business in what? In catfish. It's all. All that matters is how are you doing your own business? Who are you connecting to? You are a fish farmer today. You they go buy feed, your face they squeeze. You don't want to know how I mean how they do, how your family. You don't want to even laugh at him. You don't want to take it to the next level. How did God go ever think of giving you credit facility? It's not possible. <laughs> Am I making sense? Yeah, or he mistakenly say, okay, just take one back go. And you finish feeding, you finish selling, you finish spending, you even start again. You call the torture. <laughs> and the day you are trapped, your fish won't die. And you say, but this guy give me one bag before. May I go back there? You go back there by mistake. Because I trust my kind of businessman. By mistake. You think they will give you again? And they talk English. I mean, in a pitch, Will he give it to you again? Is it your money that commanded respect? Is integrity. Integrity. You must hold the hand of someone beside you. Even in the bank, they loan you money, you escape. People loan you money. In fact, they made it worse now. Any bank where you go to in this world, you're giving with the room. Debt up, debt up, debt up. They're there, so you don't go anywhere. Debt up, debt up. Touch not. <laughs> I met him in a training like this, and I'm surprised that between that time and now, He's done times 10. And uh, I can see some of my elder statesmen in the house. Pastor, I greet you, sir. Thank you very much. So I believe, if you can't even get access to us, or we don't even send you the slides, you can go to our website. You can, get, you can go to our website, and then um, go through some of the videos we put there, some of the training, some of the things we've written there. Most of what I said is there. My phone number remains 08063694731. Somebody asked me why, before now I don't put money before I used to. I go out all the time, like the Christian that I am. I use my church mind to the wrong business. We know it's all to the church, so please, they taught us to give, and it shall be given unto you. So they're not giving unto me, now for the delay. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to find a way to find a way to make sure that men can give on to you good measure, press down. So I give value, but don't be surprised if I ask for value in return. I want to appreciate you for the time you've given unto me, and I believe that uh, the few words we've said will have added to you. Thank you very much. Catfish, <laughs> but more people now are getting more friendly with tilapia as a fish. Maybe because of the scale on it, and people say, yes, scaly fish is the best fish that you should eat, right? But we have found a way now to culture it just like we culture catfish. That in five to six months, you get your tilapia at one kg 
1.2 kg. I have a video, but it's, it's on the other system. I will have quickly showed it to you. But you can get it if you want it. I can send it to your WhatsApp. You can demand for it. Now, Tilabia has found a very green environment. Why am I saying this? Besides the meat that we eat that is rich in protein and has very good taste, the scale and the skin is now commanding some economic value. I was privileged to travel and I saw where they make bags. Scarf, suits from tilapia skin. They even made contact lens from the scale of tilapia. Now, these people now said, if they get these scales, they are ready to even buy a good quantity. But of course, there is a particular breed of tilapia that they use. Not that other breeds cannot work, but the breed has to grow large enough for the scale to be meaningful. Now, I'm talking about large tilapia. Now, I've been handling it like that for the past seven weeks. And this is my last class. Imagine somebody now sitting down here telling you, come in free of charge to listen to somebody that would normally would be paid to, to, to um, deliver a lecture. He has done his great initiative. I'm happy to be part of it. I'm happy to be, to be here. And I pray that God will continue to give him the encouragement to do much more in Jesus' name. Thank you, Mr. Deji.